Hello friends, I hope you all are doing great. I, C.A. Pujan Kapadia, welcome you all on the today's lecture of the subject Banking Paper 6. Friends, as you are well aware, we have started with the first unit, the name of which was Central Bank. What we have covered till now was the meaning of Central Bank, the definition of Central Bank, certain important short questions like Imperial Bank of India, Bank of England, the objective of RBI. Then we have studied various objectives of central bank. Why do we need a central bank in any particular nation? After which we had studied certain points with regards to origin and growth of central bank in India, in which we have studied in detail how the roots of central bank were being planted in our country and how it is being performing since 1935. That was its incorporation till its nationalization in the year 1949 and till date, that is by 2020. So we have, in short, covered all this topic by now. Today, we are going to start with a fresh topic, the name of which is being written on the slide. It reads as functions of central bank. Here we are going to study basically what all are the things, what all are the tasks that basically a central bank does? What are the functions that are being performed by a central bank in any country? Friends, you are going to be encountered by two different kind of questions in your syllabus. One is, write a short note on functions of central bank. Second question may turn up like, explain the statement, RBI as a central bank. In the particular question, if either of the question is asked in your examination, the answer is going to remain the same that we are going to cover in the today's lecture. So friends, if any question come out of this two, that can be either the functions of central bank or RBI as a central bank, the answer is going to remain the same. How we are going to write an examination, I am going to explain you at the end. So let's start with this particular topic. Point number one, bank of issue. The first point that I have written over here is exclusive monopoly to issue currency notes, that is legal tender. The first and the most important function that a central bank does is it is having the sole monopoly. It is the only person who is authorized to issue currency in any of the country. For example, if I'm talking about our own country, India, Reserve Bank of India is having the monopoly to issue the currency notes. I have intentionally made use of one word over here, legal tender, which is nothing, which means currency notes. But in banking terms, we generally use this word authority to issue legal tender that is authority to issue currency with whom does this authority rise this authority lies with the central bank of the country so the first function read out as the exclusive monopoly to issue currency notes lies with the central bank as a result of which central bank is known as bank of issue now what is the benefit of having this kind of monopoly that would be the question so i have written the four points over here which actually gives us a brief idea like what is the benefit of giving such kind of authority, such kind of monopoly to the central bank of a country. The first point that is being written over here is uniformity of currency throughout the nation supporting smooth trade and commerce within the country. What this point wants to see is there remains a uniformity of the currency. For example, I want to do a transaction of rupees 100. Now, if I am having a 100 rupees note, I can go around the country in any corner of the country and I can use that legal tender. Just imagine the situation. If we are living in one city, if I'm going to some another city and that city is having another kind of currency, there are n number of cities, thousands of cities in our country. Fine. Now just imagine thousand different currencies. Would it be so easier to deal in that particular situation? Answer is definitely no. As a result of which, having the authority to issue monetary note, if this authority lies with only one person, then he can well administer the smooth flow of money in the economy. As a result of which, the first benefit of central bank having the monopoly to issue the currency is there remains uniformity in the currency throughout the nation. As a result of which, the trade and commerce in the industry is smoother. Let's move to the second advantage. Government can influence and control credit creation. Let's take an example. If government feels that there lies a situation 
in current scenario that there is lack of fund in the market government wants to infuse fund in the market what it can do it can order printing of more currency notes if government feels that there are excess of funds in the market what government can do it can put a pause it can stop the printing of currency notes for time being as a result of which less currency will flow in the economy in short if the government want to do create credit creation or it wants to control the credit in both the ends the authority lies with the central bank as a result of which the government task of credit creation and credit control becomes easier let's move to the third point which is saying as distinctive prestige to currency just imagine if there are thousands of manufacturers thousands of printers of printing note everyone would be having their own format of their currency notes now can you establish the goodwill that a rupee or a currency note of our country is having answer is definitely no to establish a prestige there should be a single tender which is applicable around the world is a result of which if we are having a monopoly if a central bank is having a monopoly in issuing the currency notes definitely it is going to raise the prestige it is definitely going to raise the goodwill of the currency we are dealing with the last point written over here is government can appropriate the profits earned on printing for nation's good you are well aware that printing can also be a business and many people may make profit out of it just imagine if it is being privatized that is printing of currency note is privatized any xyz person can start printing the currency note fine in this particular case the profit that is being earned is going into the pocket of that particular private person against which in the current scenario this authority lies with the central bank of the country as a result of which whatsoever profit is being earned by printing of this currency notes also are being directed are being regulated by the government so that government can use those profits for the nation's welfare for the welfare of the country's citizen so this are the basic advantages of monopoly lying with the central bank to issue the currency note i am just giving you one minute and would like to request you all to quickly go through all the five points written over here well friends i hope you have taken a quick overview on the points that i have explained so the first point that we have studied as a function of central bank is it is a bank of issue that is it is having the sole authority to issue legal tender in a country let's move to the second point government's bank the first main point that i have written over here is banker to government as we have discussed in the earlier slides also that central bank plays an important role as a banker to the government now it basically does three important functions for government let's see each of them the first that i have written over here is it maintains accounts of central government and state government in any country there lies a central government then lies a state government so if you take the example of india there are various states in our country and one as a central government all the accounts of all these governments are being maintained with whom the answer is rbi that is reserve bank of india so basically the central bank of a country act as a banker of the central bank and the state bank so all the central banks all the state banks are having that particular account so all these accounts are being maintained by whom they are maintained by the central bank let's move to the second point it receives and makes payment for government central bank is the one who is paying on behalf of government who is receiving on behalf of government let's take an example you all might be aware with goods and service tax that is gst now whatsoever amount i am paying in the name of gst is being finally deposited with the government right 
so finally where the amount of gst goes it goes to the government in which account of the government finally the one which is maintained and governed by the central bank of the country third point i written here over here is it advances money that is it gives loans to the government to meet the fund requirements of the government government may also face deficit at certain point of time fine at the time it requires some funding so that it can do good it can do spend for the welfare of the citizen of that particular region as a result of which government may also require funds for utilization now if the government is feeling deficit who is going to come and help the government at that particular point of time again the answer is central bank so central bank does the multitasking for government it is maintaining the account for the government which we have covered in the first point it is receiving and making payment for the government that we have studied in the second point and third when our government needs borrowing when our government needs finance who is advancing the money central bank is advancing the money to the government basically by doing all these activities central bank of any country is acting as a banker to the government so it is known as government's bank over and about this point there is one additional point that i have highlighted over here advisor to government central bank basically advises the government on all the monetary and banking matters now just for your information i would like to mention over here if any financial monetary or banking related decision is taken it is being for sure taken by the government fine because government is the right authority who has a power to pass on the decisions to make decisions on behalf of the country but at the time of making the decisions government may require the idea about the existing scenario that lies in the monetary market it lies in the banking system of a country then it is going to get advice from the central bank as a result of which we can say central bank x as an advisor to the government in short central bank is also known as government's bank first because it is providing various kinds of banking facilities to state governments and central government and secondly it is acting as a important advisor at the time of taking various decisions on the matters related to finance monetary and banking system i hope i am clear with this particular point that is government's bank let's move ahead to the third point the point read as custodian of reserves for commercial banks here we are going to talk about important reserve which is known as cash reserve ratio we'll understand it in detail the first point i've written over here is all the commercial banks are required to maintain cash reserve ratio with the central bank i have discussed about crr and slr that is cash reserve ratio and statutory liquidity ratio in my earlier videos as of now what i'm going to list stress is on every commercial bank in our country are required mandatorily to maintain a particular percentage of the total deposits as reserve with whom with central bank that is reserve bank of india so it is a requirement which is being mandated it has become compulsory which is being passed by the central bank so it is necessary for each and every bank who is doing or his licensed under the banking act is required to maintain a particular percentage as a reserve with the central bank of the country now what is the benefit of keeping this reserve let's study that particular point in second point i have written crr that is cash reserve ratio help the commercial banks to meet the emergency fund requirements and easily tackle liquidity crunch type of situations you all are well aware that there comes a situation where the commercial banks may feel the scarcity of funds shortage of fund and it may require fund in order to meet the demand liabilities fine for example i am having my account with xyz bank now what xyz bank has done is it has given all the amount which was lying with deposit in form of advances to different borrowers now i am going suddenly and i am asking for my money back at that particular point of time the xyz bank is not having sufficient fund so that he can return the amount of deposit that i have kept with the bank so in such kind of emergency situation where the bank needs utmost need of the fund what they can do is they can approach to rbi and ask for funds out of the reserves they have maintained with rbi so this cash reserve ratio basically helps all the commercial banks at the time when there is an emergency when they feel liquidity crunch now let's see 
CRR helps this central bank. How is help? It is helping central bank. It is helping central bank to control credit creation and implement the monetary policy. We are going to study in the last part of this chapter what is monetary policy and what are the important tools of monetary policy. But just to let you know or to mention you over here, maintaining reserve ratios is one of the important tools of monetary policy in our country. Now let's understand how the central bank can do control credit creation because of this reserve ratio. Let's take an example. If there lies a situation where government feels that there is excess of funds in the market, means there is surplus of money which is supplied in an economy. Now what government wants to do? It wants to reduce the flow of money in an economy. So what RBI is going to do is, RBI is going to order to all the, cent uh, all the commercial banks to increase the reserve ratio. So for example, XYZ bank was supposed to be required to keep 3% of the total reserves with the RBI. But now what RBI is telling? No, you are supposed to require to keep 5% of your total deposits. As a result of which, more amount is going to RBI because previously XYZ bank was only giving 3%. Now XYZ bank is retaining 5%. As a result of which, XYZ bank would be in a position to lend to advance 2% less to the public who is asking for loans. I hope you are getting this example. What I want to say by this particular thing is by making changes in the reserve ratio requirements, RBI can affect the credit creation and at the same time, it can also do credit control. As a result of which, reserve ratio is one of the most important monetary tool which is being used in order to control the supply of money in an economy. Now let's read some statistics. In India, present cash reserve ratio is 3%. We have already covered this in the earlier lecture also. In the table which I have given you, CRR stands at 3% as of May 2020. Now on what this 3% is calculated? A CRR is calculated at a percentage of net demand and time liabilities. I hope you might be aware with this word, demand liabilities and time liabilities. For a bank, just understand, me, you, we all are the customers. What we do? We invest our savings with the savings bank account of the bank or we may have a current account or we may enter into a fixed deposit which is known as time liabilities. So savings account, current accounts are basically demand liabilities and fixed account is a time liability. So totally what bank is going to do is it will do the total of the entire liabilities against which they are going to deduct all the obligations they are having. Out of which, by doing this particular thing, I am going to get NDTL, which is known as net demand and time liabilities. Now, what's the amount I am getting as a net demand and time liability? I am going to calculate 3% of it and I am going to keep this amount as reserve with Reserve Bank of India. As a result of which, CRR is calculated at a percentage of NDTL, that is net demand and time liability. So, I hope you are clear with this particular point. I am just giving you a minute. Take a quick view on this particular points. So friends, I hope you are clear with all the points we have covered till here. First point that we saw was bank of issue. That was central bank has the sole power monopoly to issue the legal tender in a particular country. Second was government's bank. All the transactions of the governments are being taken care of by the central bank and central bank also acts as an advisor to the government. Third, it is the custodian of the reserves. That is the cash reserve ratio, which is supposed to be maintained by the commercial banks in the country. 
let's move to the next point point number 4 custodian of foreign balances in country you all are well aware that there lies foreign exchange amount with the country who is the main person who is having to get the custody of all this amount it is the central bank of that particular country as a result of which it is known as custodian of foreign balances in our country let's read point wise point first point written over here is central bank holds all the foreign exchange assets of commercial as well as non commercial banks what so amount commercial bank or the non commercial banks are having in form of foreign exchange assets it is being held by the central bank of the particular country second point written over here says central bank is responsible for importantly two things first is maintaining exchange rate you all are well aware that all the currencies majorly i can say all the currencies are being globally traded for example indian rupee is globally traded with the us dollar indian currency is being globally traded by japanese yen fine so there are many currencies with whom we are directly dealing as a result of which the amount that is being quoted in the international market central bank is the one who needs to take utmost care that our own currency that is indian rupees do not get devalued much as a result of which the responsibility lies with the central bank to maintain the exchange rate and to take utmost care that the our own currency that is indian rupees are not devalued in the international market second point is it is also responsible to manage exchange control and other restrictions see when a country currency is being traded globally there are certain restrictions there are certain provisions which are supposed to be followed there are certain controls which are supposed to be implemented there are many x even there is one of the important act which you might have heard that is foreign exchange management act fema right so there are many restrictions which apply with respect to the foreign exchange currency rbi that is the central bank is being responsible to take care that all these provisions are being properly taken care of whenever we are dealing with the foreign balances in our country so basically the responsibility of central bank lies with importantly two points first is maintaining the rate of exchange and second is managing exchange control and other restrictions third point is central bank maintains reserves with imf i have mentioned this word in the first lecture that is ibrd and imf international bank for reconstruction and development and second was imf which stands for international monetary fund so what a bank does is it maintains reserves of foreign exchange with imf also and in exchange of it it obtains special drawing rights we are having the chapter in next semester in which i am going to explain in detail what is imf how does it works what are the advantages what are the limited limitations etc so for now what we can do is we can just understand that imf is an institution in which i am supposed to maintain certain amount as the foreign exchange in form of foreign exchange so what i am doing as a reserve bank of india for india i am depositing certain amount as foreign exchange with imf against which i am getting voting power special drawing right is having a technical meaning but for now we will remember it that i want certain voting power in that particular institution that is imf as a result of which i am supposed to maintain certain amount of reserves with imf this is all about custodian of foreign balances in the country let's move to the next point lender of last resort i hope you might have heard this word in your economic subject lender of last resort means whenever no one is there to help you out central bank is going to be proving itself as the lender of last resort matlab jab sare darwaze band ho jayenge where the commercial banks are going to go they are going to approach the central bank let's see the points written over here first point which is written over here read as central bank maintains banking accounts of all the banks along with it so it is termed as bankers bank you take any bank of our country each and every bank are having their own accounts with whom with the rbi that is central bank of our country is a result of which central bank is also known as bankers bank banko ki bank kon hai central bank that is rbi in our country second point central bank always accommodate any eligible commercial banks facing shortage of funds so whenever any eligible commercial banks who feel that there is a shortage of fund eligible means aise nahi na chahiye ki har bar wo rote rote aa jaye that i want help i want help if there is a genuine reason in which 
the RBI feels that commercial banks is actually facing shortage of funds. Central bank is never going to say no to help that particular commercial bank. Third point, it assumes the responsibility of meeting the fund requirements of an eligible commercial banks directly or indirectly. Either central bank is directly going to give funds or it is going to use certain medium via which it is going to take care that the bank gets the help. As a result of which central bank is going to definitely assume the responsibility of fulfilling the requirement of that particular commercial bank. So when the commercial banks are left with no resource to pay off to their depositors, it is the central bank who comes to their rescue. As a result of which central bank is known as lender of last resort. In short, what I told you initially, जब सारे दरवाजे बंद हो जाएंगे, where the commercial banks are going to knock their door for, they are going to go for the RBI, that is Reserve Bank of India. So this was all about lender of last resort. Let's move forward to the next point: central clearance, settlement, and transfer. Let's read what is written over here. As the central bank keeps cash reserve of commercial banks, we have just studied two points back. that all the commercial banks are required to maintain crr that is cash reserve ratio with the central bank so the same thing is written over here as the central bank keeps cash reserve for the commercial banks it is easier for the member banks to settle their claims in the books of central bank what they are trying to say is whenever there is any dealing between any of the bank that is it can be any bank you may take sbi you may take bob any of the bank fine and dealing between bank and the rbi so the settlement process between the two banks that is rbi and sbi rbi and bob becomes much more easier why because first point is rbi is having bank accounts of all the banks along with it and second is rbi is also having cash reserve ratio of all the banks as a result of which when it comes to settlement of the amount it becomes easier to do the interbanking operations let's move to the second point these are the clearing house operations now this is the important word that you might have heard which you need to remember clearing house operations i will give a simple example to understand this word for example i have received a check of rupees 10000 rupees what i am going to do is i am going to my bank i am going to deposit that check fine in the check box or i am going to give to that particular personnel who is accepting the check in the bank now what that particular personnel is going to do He is going to give that particular check to the clearing department. Fine. Now, what is clearing department basically? They are going to check the validity of the check, whether the check is valid from all the terms and condition. For example, it is having a right date, it is having a proper signature of the issuer of the check, and all the etc. amounts which are required to see that whether the check is valid or not. You have covered all the things of validity of the check in your last year studies. in the topic of negotiable instruments so i am not report repeating all those points but what is clearing basically that i want to explain you guys so a check gets clear when it passes through all this process fine what i have done is i have received the check from the person from whom i was supposed to receive the payment i am depositing this check with the my bank account i am going to my bank that bank personnel is actually transferring my check to the clearing house or the clearing department clearing guy is going to verify all the particulars of the check as a result of which at the end it is going to clear my check and is going to debit the amount from the issuer's account and credit the account in my own account this operations are basically known as clearing house operations so basically this operations are mainly performed by the central bank of the country the major transactions which are included in this are check clearance that i explained as of now claim settlement sometimes there can be a situation where one bank is in a situation to pay another bank again the settlement takes place in the particular operations last is fund transfer for example i am having my account with bank a and my friend is having account with bank b i have to pay rupees 25000 to my friend i am doing him immediately fund transfer fine so i am just opening my mobile banking i am saying fund transfer for 25000 to my friend as a result of which what is the transaction between me and my friend i am giving 25000 rupees to my friend but actually what is the transaction between the bank bank a needs to debit my account and bank b needs to credit the account of my friend as a result of which bank a's account is supposed to be debited by 25000 bank b's account is supposed to be credited by 25000 now during a entire day it is not only me and my friend who are transacting there can be n number of transactions between bank a and bank b 
now this fund transfer is being done or taken care of centrally at where at the rbi or with the central bank so it is a one shot process a clearing house operations which is being done in the form of fund transfer in short what you guys are supposed to remember over here is the clearing house operations are mainly taken care of by central bank which basically includes three operations first is clearance of check second is settlement of claims and third is transfer of funds however we should also know at the same time this functions can also be functioned by the leading bank of the locality or the area for example i feel that in a particular city sbi that is state bank of india is the leading bank fine so what sbi can do is on behalf of central bank he can do all the clearing house operations in his own name so it is not necessary only central bank has the power to do clearing house operations any other commercial bank or scheduled bank can also do this particular part if it is a leading banker in that particular area or locality i hope i am clear with this particular point it was a bit technical so i am just requesting all of you to take a quick view over this particular slide well i hope you are clear with the points which are mentioned over here next let's move to the next point controller of credit i have explained you earlier also that central bank is responsible for credit creation also in credit control also so in this point we are basically going to take care of how the central bank acts as a controller of credit in any economy first point which is written over here says central bank has always been the primary institution which is responsible for credit control and credit creation that is something that i already told you second point is for this it take resort to various tools like i have made a mention that there is a monetary policy tools fine but there are certain tools which are included in the monetary policy of india which are they they are mainly classified into three parts first is rate of interest that is bank can adjust the rate of interest in order to ensure that the money supply in an economy is being controlled second is changes in reserve ratio that is bank may increase cash reserve ratio it may decrease the cash reserve ratio in order to ensure proper money supply in an economy and third point is money market operations that is buying or selling of government securities according to the situation whatever central bank feels right it can either buy the government securities or it can sell the government securities friends i am not going in deep for this particular point because in the next lecture we are going to take with the topic of economic stability all these points are going to be explained to you in detail in that particular part as a result of which we are going to cover the deep knowledge of this particular three points in that particular lecture so basically what we need to understand over here is whenever central bank feels the need that the money supply in an economy is either more or less it is going to take resort to any of the tools or it can combine it take resort to all the tools in order to ensure that the money supply can in an economy is not less not even more it is sufficient enough as it is actually needed so last point is so central bank takes utmost care for economic stability in an economy by the tools of credit creation and credit control so friends with this i would like to say that we have covered entire seven points let's recap all the points that we have covered over here the first point that we have studied was it was a bank of issue so the exclusive monopoly to issue currency lies with the central bank second is government's bank so all the accounts of the government are being maintained by the central bank and is also acting as an advisor to the government third is custodian of reserves of commercial banks as i explained you banks are supposed to maintain cash reserve ratio with the central bank as of now the rate ratio is 3% next point is custodian of foreign balances in the country you may have any kind of foreign balances with any of the bank finally who is going to have the custody of that particular part central bank 
basically it is responsible to two important functions first is maintaining the exchange rate and second is managing the exchange controls next point was lender of the last resort when all the banks are saying no to lend any of the particular bank the bank is going to approach whom the central bank next is clearance system settlement system and transfer system and last was credit control that is to ensure that appropriate funds flow in a particular economy so if the question is asked write a short note on the functions of central bank you are directly going to write as it is that i have given over here that is this mentioning of seven points and explanation of the same but if the question comes explain rbi as a central bank what you guys are supposed to do is you are going to write the same points fine we are going to discuss the seven points but only thing we need to add up in that particular part is we need to talk with reference to india fine so rbi is a central bank of india so the functions of central bank and the functions of rbi are going to remain the same because rbi is also a central bank but as of now we are going to do a general discussion because we are topic we are dealing with the topic functions of central bank but when it comes to in specific rbi as a central bank we are going to talk about the same topics but with reference to india so this is a minor change that you need to smartly inculcate in your answer rest all the points are going to remain the same i hope i am clear with the today's lecture and there are clearance about how we are going to attempt this particular question when it comes in a exam i thank you all for your patient listening and i hope to see you soon in my next lecture of banking 6 thank you friends